Hello. So today, I took on this jacket. It's a jacket that makes me feel more comfortable when performing for a crowd. I don't know if you noticed, but I also like to wear fancy sneakers, as they say something about my personality too. I want you to take a moment and think about your favorite garment. How does it make you feel? Does it make you feel strong, empowered, sexy maybe? That is what fashion does. Fashion can let you stand out of the crowd or let you blend in. And this is different from every one of us. It is very personal. And this personalization is what I like so much about fashion. There is also a downside. Fashion is the second most polluting industry after oil. A faster production process in combination with lower quality of materials have made our garments cheaper. Water, farmland, chemicals and pesticides are heavily used. And there's a lot of waste. 10% of what's been produced is never sold. There's waste during the production phase. And after wearing, we throw our garments away and they get burned or they end up in landfill. The fashion industry is aware of these problems and they're improving the different steps within the supply chain. They're working on recycling and circular fashion. And with this, they're trying to change the human behavior of seven billion of people, which is an enormous task. Our consumptive behavior started already centuries ago. Trade expanding in the 16th century, for example, and, um, sorry, yeah, and the industrial revolution of the 19th have accelerated this. We like to gather things as they underline our personal style and success. Our brain is not helping either. Our subconsciousness is making the decisions for us because it can do it better, faster and more efficient than our consciousness. And so changing a deep-rooted behavior is a difficult task. But I think fast fashion and disposable garments represent an incredible opportunity. We have an entire generation who now expect to own a garment for a year or two before disposing it and buying something new. And with the right type of materials, they can be custom designed to meet that life cycle. We need solutions for the reality that we're living in, and not for an ideal world in which we can tell consumers to wear their garments longer, and they will. And for this, I took inspiration of the biological life cycle. Nature has its own consumptive behavior. Every year, a tree sheds its leaves to get a new set. Could we grow and compose garments just like the tree and its leaves? For those of you who are not familiar with the supply chain of fashion, I take the example of cotton. Cotton is grown on the land. After harvesting, this material is spun into a fiber. This fiber is then woven into a fabric. Out of this fabric, pattern pieces are cut. Those pieces are sewn together to form the garment. And there's a lot of transport involved as well. The material can be grown, for example, in Egypt, but made into a fabric in China and into a garment in Bangladesh. What I do is I grow a material and I directly use this material in a 3D mold. And after drying, the garment is ready to be taken off and worn. I skip steps like spinning, weaving, sewing and cutting patterns. And the shorter uh, supply chain is also reducing on transport. It all started when working with mycelium. What you see here is a microscopic view of mycelium the root of fungus. They're also called hyphia, and I like it because already it looks for me like a textile. This material can be grown into a petri dish, and this will take one and a half week. After harvesting, we take it out and we place it onto a mold as a kind of patchwork. And by drying, it will naturally glue together. Proof of concept has been developed to test if this idea would work. And now prototypes have been developed to improve the process and to learn about the material properties and to make the material stronger. The 3D modeling process has many benefits. 
It allows for perfectly shaped roundness, shoulders and a fitted bust line. Seamless garments raise the comfort of wearing. But most of all, we can make perfectly fitted garments that fit your body shape and style. And if you're not fitting into the standard of the Western body ratio, that's not a problem either. Garments can be made to fit every body type. Together with the designer, we're working on the design and production process. We need to learn what exactly are the options and the boundaries of working with this material. Can we add, for example, sleeves? Or how should we add a color? The system can also be applied on other biomaterials. Think about algae, for example, or bioplastics. And I'm sure you can think of materials as well that could fit in. I've been talking about this design process first, as without a good design, no one will ever wear these kind of garments, no matter how sustainable they are. But a shorter supply chain comes with environmental benefits as well. By producing on demand, we only make the pieces that are sold, so we're reducing on the 10% I mentioned earlier. Growing only what you need is eliminating waste in the production phase. And after wearing, you can simply bury a garment in the ground and it will naturally decompose. And which, by the way, doesn't mean you only have to wear your garment once. A shorter supply chain reduces the need of chemicals and pesticides. No expensive farmland is needed or its seasonal influences as we can grow this material in factories. Compared to cotton, I only use half percent of water and local production is saving on transport as well. There's still a lot of work to be done before we all can wear and afford these kind of garments. And that's why we need to collaborate with microbiologists, engineers, designers and more. I think that the future of fashion is collaboration, and on the crossover of industries lies the path to true innovation. The biggest obstacle, in my opinion, is that we're trying to stick to an old system of spinning, weaving and cutting, and that we're not looking at the reality of how 7 billion people wear and treat their garments. If you realize that, on average, we wear our garments only seven times, and that is including the garments in the back of your closet. Why would you spend time on a supply chain that's based on the fact that garments were worn a lifetime? Why are we still making fashion that should last for 40 years if we only wear them for one or two years maximum? I hope I have inspired you to rethink the fashion industry with me. Whether you're a scientist, a de designer, a mom, someone taking off my trash, it doesn't matter. We're all part of this, of, we all wear garments, and so we're all part of the problem. And I want to invite you to become part of the solution. Thank you.